Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome, all my friends, to Couch Pilots, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Bottle Cap Kid, a.k.a. the Black Rat Snake. And across from me is my best friend in the whole universe, Captain Philip Rastasure. Captain, how are you this evening? I'm doing wonderful, sir. I, it warms my heart every time you say, you know, here with my bestest friend. I, it, it, it really means a lot to me. It, it touches me. I know what you need. I know what you need, and I'm, you know what? I'm going to be the guy to give it to you. I appreciate it, my friend. Every time. So, um, Hey, thanks for the spring and for the chips and salsa. Hey, I would do anything for you. I know what you need. And I knew tonight you needed chips and also a variety of salsas. A quick plug for Moe's. Go to Moe's. Request <laughs> just chips and salsa. They'll give you a, a complete ass load for $6. <laughs> I, I can feed my children and my family for a week now. I'm, I appreciate it. I know what you need. I, part of me was like, do I, do I give him $3? No, I don't want any money from you. <laughs> or do I just say, thanks? I don't know. I just want to watch you eat the chips. I want to see the joy envelope your face. That's what I want to see. Then you came to the right place. <sighs> and all of you listeners today, all of our frequent flyers, you came to the right place for failed television pilots. We're so happy you're joining us. As I mentioned at the top of the show, my name is Jason, and, and I'm, I'm going to be one of your pilots this evening. I'm going to fly through the, the great blue ocean of the air, and I'm going to do it with no one else than Philip Restisher. Exactly. We are a team. Mm-hmm. We've been a team for almost 40 episodes. Right. And we will continue to be a team until one of us dies. Which uh, hopefully will be sooner than later. I hope so. <laughs> this, this life has got to end, right? I would hope so. It's taken forever. <laughs> it is. It's not going well. So um, you, you told me you had uh, a story about uh, DSJ, our tar- Tarmac John, the guy who works on our Tarmac. Yeah. Um, the other day, um, I got a call from the International Tarmac Association. Okay. And they requested some information about Tarmac John. And it didn't seem like he was in trouble or anything. You know, they just, you know, asking about his performance. Sure. And asking about, you know, if he's saved our lives at all. And I was like, the, the, the times are countless. I think I filled out a similar form a couple months ago, and it was like Tarmac license renewal. Similar to the renewal you had a few right. weeks back. So, right. yeah, I hear what you're saying. And that's how they got my number is from you filling out the form. Right. And I guess yours was like step one of the process. Mm -hmm. And then calling me was step two of the process. But uh, come to find out, he got a uh, plaque in the mail the other day for being Tarmac Employee of the Year. Wow. Yes. And so... There's an award for everything. Right. Um, And I was dumbfounded. Right. Because of all the Tarmac workers in the world. Like if it was just like your regional... A regional award. That'd yeah. be great. That'd be great. That'd still be good. Right. I mean, you should be happy with that. We would be happy with that. We'd probably give him a raise. Yeah. But now, this is international. This is like all the tarmac workers in Taiwan, mm-hmm. all of them in Australia. He's better than all of them. And there's got to be more countries beyond those two. I, none come to mind, honestly, right now. But there have to be more countries. Iceland. Than just, yeah, that checks out. You that's got, that's, that's, that's the, it for you? Yeah, that's all I got. I want to say Bul- Bulgaria. Bulgaria. But- Ball gay or gay area, get the gay area. <laughs> so yeah, out in balls in the gay area. <laughs> no, so this is it's a huge honor, and we would like to take a moment to congratulate Tarmac John on doing such an outstanding. I asked him. I said, "Do you want to come on the flight? You know, and, and you know, get in front of the microphone." He's, he's like, earned it. He's like, "Nope, nope, not no." He's not interested in that at all. There's a guy who knows his place. You know, with, did he earn a flight with us by by winning that award? You betcha. Would it be would it be his best use of his skill set? Probably not. And no. he knows that. Oh yeah, he's like, if I'm in the plane with them as they take off and land, something bad can happen. He's like, I can, I am going to serve my friends yeah. the best way possible, and I'm going to be right there on that blacktop in my chucks, mm-hmm. waving great those chucks. yellow cones. Yeah, great chucks. And, and I don't know if you ever noticed this, but the uh, the the carpet match that matches the drapes. He's, oh yes. he's got those bright orange chucks on. They match the golden cones that he's waving over his head. 
And I got to ask you too, because I I didn't even know this award existed until a few moments ago. But now that I know that it does, does he have? Is there anything else that comes with the plaque? Does it, any kind of um, financial benefit or gift cards? Anything else? No, there's um, there is a uh, a trip, a free trip. Okay, and I don't know if it. I think it's like he can take a cruise, a Canadian cruise, like a whale watching cruise. Oh, great! Um, or he can go to Australia to a, a, a shark. Expedition, Canada, another country. I knew it. Yes. I knew I was missing one. Or right. yeah, and then the shark expedition where they put you in that cage and they lower you in. Right. Um, and I think there was another one, but he he hadn't decided yet what he wants to do. So I mean, Oof. you know, there's no raise or anything. I mean, I don't know what we can do to. I mean, he's already making six figures. He's gonna, he's going to add that award to his resume. Understandably so. He's probably going to request a raise. Rightfully so. He's well within his rights to do that, and I, I would be hard pressed to tell him no. Well, I told him if he if he wanted any kind of compensation or raise, he would have to submit it in writing. So I haven't gotten anything yet. So we'll I just don't, wait. If it's if he, he has to fill out a form or anything like that, I'm sure you won't get it. Why? Because he's uh, he's left handed and he has not found a pen that has fit his left hand properly. That's true. To my knowledge, that's oh. how I understand. That's how I interpret it anyway. Anyway, congratulations to Tarmac John. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Round of applause. You absolutely earned it. We love you. And you're, you're out there, and, and we, we can say whatever we want about Tarmac John week after week and how great of a job he's doing. This award is proving it. It's, it oh, I, oh, I hear it. I hear the feedback, too. Oh, no. Oh, oh my Lord. <laughs> Fixed it. <laughs> and who's to say Tarmac John wasn't directly responsible for fixing that either? Right. Incredible. He showed me. He said, just if you hear a hiss, I push the orange button down. Just like that. Well, he is stuck on that color orange, isn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. All right. Uh, fasten the seatbelts. Yep. We're taking off. We're getting ready for the takeoff. Everyone get aboard. Put your crap in the overhead compartment. Sit down and wait for further instructions. Shut your f- mouth. Yeah, r- well, yeah. Adult, w- wait till it's an adult-only flight before we start talking like that. Okay. Are there kids on this flight? Uh, if, you know, if it were up to me, there'd be no kids anywhere ever. <laughs> So what, what is this show about? Uh, Captain Restasher and I have each taken a solemn oath that will forever bind us, not only to the wide open spaces of this Earth's atmosphere, but also with television pilots that only had one episode. These failed pilots may be gone, but they are not for... Uh, okay. They're, actually, they're most definitely forgotten. Right, That's right. What but the more reason to shine the blinding light on them that only couch pilots can bring. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Do it. Um, this is a painstaking process. We punish ourselves, our brains, and our eyes, so you don't have to. And then we give you the audio enjoyment yeah. of hearing about them. Yep. So it's like it's one of those things. Like we walk over the, the hot coals. We we, we Bruce Willis, uh, John McClane take off our socks and we walk over that broken glass in that tower. Right, I'm fine with it. I, I'm honored. We've, we've done. We're, we're narrowing in on 40 episodes. And there was a time in my life where I got up in the morning, I looked in the mirror, and every day I said, I, I hate what I see. I hate what I see. I, I truly hate myself. And now I get up, and while I still think that, now I, I can say I'm going to punish myself right. for what I deserve, right. but there's going to be some sort of benefit. Someone will benefit by my punishment. Sure. Someone's day is going to be better. Right. Out of our six listeners. Oh, it's gone the, down. <laughs> one of those listeners. Oh, boy. One of those listeners will have a better day. Hold on, folks. So uh, what are we discussing today? It's uh, today we discussed the pilot episode of Constant Pain from the year of our Lord two thousand and one. Great year! It was a very good year. Arguably one of the best years in this country's history. Sure was. I mean, who's going to argue that? What are the some of the highlights? We don't have a call-in number, so nobody can argue with this. It's not live. Nobody can argue with this. And then uh, I'll be damned if we're going to get some fan feedback. So. Uh, yeah, 2001, a year most of us will never forget. Uh, 2001 becomes known as the Summer of the Shark after a number of shark attack fatalities. Ooh. What do you think? What do you contribute that to? Um, the warming, earth warming, yeah. uh, it's warming the water, yeah. and so they're getting closer to the uh, shores, looking yep. for food. That's the way I, that's, I watch Shark Week, and that's what it tells me. Everyone is food. Every living yeah. thing is food. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, you're a fucking shark. Yeah, you know, I have, a, I have a betta fish on my counter at home. I take the top off to feed it. Not my personal top off. I, I stay fully clothed. <laughs> right. But I, I throw in a little fish pellet, and he kind of looks at it, and he goes, eh. 
But if I get those flightless fruit flies and I throw it in there and that thing struggles on the water, it sends those waves, that fish wants that. He wants to eat something alive. Yep. Everything wants to eat something. It, it's it's uh, part of the, the hunt, the hunter. Yeah, the circle of life, yeah. the thrill of the kill, right? Yeah. Sharks, I mean, I, I, sharks are no different. There's tons of people I want to kill. Yeah. And what would it be thrilling for you to do so? In the moment, probably. Afterwards, it'd be a lot of, uh, oh, oh, what have I done? Well, how do I escape the... The, <laughs> the clutches of this big, huge, masculine man in prison? Yeah, kind of like that. Oh, so you're, you're straight away planning on being caught. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're not even trying to yeah. come up with an idea of how to escape or get by with this. No, I'm too lazy to be a good killer. <laughs> you go right to how will I avoid being raped in prison. <laughs> Boy, talk about circle of life. Um, the legendary racing driver Dale Earnhardt, who had won a record seven NASCAR championship, dies in the last lap crash during the Daytona 500 at the Daytona International Speedway. Yep, he was supposed to turn left, and he turned right into Ooh, the wall. Boy, right in heaven, some would say. Eh. Oh, hell? I don't know. He was the intimidator. Maybe his, maybe his way of life and driving and intimidation caused him to go to hell, which I don't want. He was a good driver. That's cleared up right now. Right. It was strictly the... Pr- I don't have any ill will against Mr. Earnhardt. Just based on what you know about heaven and hell and how to get to each place. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But his son, Dale Jr., can't wait for that son of a bitch to get in a car wreck and die, too. Where is he going to go to hell? Hell. Oh, for sure. For, just for sheer stupidity, arrogance, and uh, what is it when your like, family's real rich and you're just kind of standing around? Like the Kardashians. It's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for to describe Born it? with a silver spoon in your mouth? Sure. He was born with a silver steering wheel up his asshole. Oh, boy. that's. I'd rather have a spoon in my b-hole than a whole steering wheel. Unless we're talking like uh, Hot Wheels, then yeah. I then I'd prefer the Hot Wheels. They were so little. Oh, oh, it'd be perfect. That'd yeah. be the per. If I were to stick any steering wheel at my butt, uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Pisa, Pizza, the Leaning Tower of Pizza opens after eleven years of repairs to stop it from falling over. Now, was it was it originally leaning? I mean, when it was built, was it leaning? I don't think or so. Or do you think over time it's done that? I think time claimed it. So it was it. just Tower of Pizza. Yeah. And then over time, it's they're like, oh, looks to me like it's leaning. We're going to start calling it the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Right, and people are drawn to that. I don't know what that building is. I, I have no real scale for how tall yeah, it is. Yeah, was it like an office building? Was it... Like probably an internet startup or something? I don't know. Like the original Yahoo? Or the right. original AOL? Right. Possibly. Maybe. And, you know, I, the whole thing is, hey, that thing is leaning over. That's pretty cool to see that it's still standing. Why would they try to fix that? And, and if they did fix it, did they put it straight up, or did they, did they fix it to the point where it's still leaning right. a little bit to keep the appeal, which, to me, would defeat the purpose altogether of trying to fix it? That's a good question. Would you, if you had the chance to go see it, mm-hmm. would you want to see it leaning, or would you want to see it straight up, or would you want to see it just toppled over because it leans so much? I think I want to see it. I don't want them to fix the base of it or try to bring it up. I just want them to like put a big rope around it to try to hold it in place. Oh, just put a stake, like a tent stake on the other side? On the other side. Yep. Right, and then put a rope around it so they're don't, doing no real work because you know it's going to come back to the taxpayer who's going to have to pay for that, but still have the appeal of it leaning over. And, you know, maybe you make it a green rope, and then you can like use an app on a camera or something to take the green out, like sure. a green screen. Or a clear rope. Yeah, that'd be better. <laughs> that'd save me from downloading an app. That's a good idea. I like that idea better. <laughs> hey, I, I'm a thinker. You're full of ideas. Outside the box. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Napster is closed down by the court after following an injunction on behalf of the Recording Industry Association of America, or their RIAA, as we both sure, call I, it that's, frequently. Yeah. Uh, I love Napster. Never had, I honestly, I never had a chance to use it. I got in trouble with the internet at a young age for pornography. Really? By I, your parents? Oh, yeah. Or by federal government? Um, no, I was underage at the time. So I, no matter what I was looking at, would would I would serve no jail time. The only, the only sentence I got was being sheltered from Napster. Huh. I used Napster. It would take like you would you would try to download like three songs, mm-hmm. and you start at like eight thirty at night, and then you would go to bed and wake up the next morning. It would finish up, and then like you click on it, and it was like, um, the Fat Boys, and it wasn't like Vixen. Oh, but that's not what you wanted to begin. No, with. I wanted Vixen. What is Vixen? It was a band uh, with some girls in it. Okay. I don't remember what they sang offhand. I always thought it'd be. Great. Do you remember the Nelson twins, the the, sure. the blonde, oh, yeah, yeah. long blonde hair guys? Yeah, absolutely. I think maybe I tried to download them. 
But you never, yeah, that was it was kind of you, a thing where it was just again the wild west of the internet. Sure, no one knew exactly what they were downloading. There's a name attached to it, but you never know what you're getting. Yep. It was dial up. It could have been, you know, I could have tried to open it up and it was a, a JPEG file mm-hmm. of a pregnant woman um, with a dog licking her vagina. Why does it always have to be dirty? I why would that, why, do you, why does that have to be dirty? Because the seven people that listen to us have expectations. <laughs> have expectations. <laughs> Hello, friends. Um, what else we got here? Let's see. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is should be the Sorcerer's Stone. So it must have been a British website that I got this from. Uh, Shrek comes out. Destiny's Child. There, is it, that's a movie? Uh, no, but it should be. Oh, you didn't break those up well enough. I'm I, sorry. As the, as the host. Shrek. Shrek came no, out. No, you just said, and movies, Shrek. and Shrek is a movie. <laughs> I understand. I got you. Okay, Lord of the Rings, Shrek, and Harry Potter. A couple movies that came out that year. And you probably don't like any of that stuff. No, none of that appealed to me. So oh. there's no use talking about it. All right, how about this? TV shows, Ed. Did you ever see Ed? Yeah, Ed had uh, Michael William Black in it. And T- Tom Cavanaugh. Tom Cavanaugh. I never, I never saw an episode of Ed. I, was always, I always wanted to. Ed, it's not on DVD. I don't, think, I don't think it's available to be seen anywhere. Hmm. Maybe we should tweet our good friend Michael William Black and see where to get those DVDs. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Dharma and Greg. That, Dharma that sh- was that so show- pretty, so pretty. Jenna Elfman is just what a beautiful woman. Like back then, she was smoking hot, and she's still a very good looking woman. I but she's just she's a beautiful woman. Yep. Oh my god, that '70s show that show sucked. That was stupid. That was the dumbest show. It was really dumb. Futurama. Did you ever watch that? I didn't really watch it very much. I know that you're a big fan of it. Yeah. Uh, the Sopranos over here. Did you ever see that show? The Sopranos over here. Yeah. They'd always say, "Hey, I'm a." Uh, I'm eating some cannolis over here. So I, no, I, I saw the last episode, like the last five minutes of the last episode, and it was, seemed really bland. <laughs> Nothing really happened. There was no excitement. Well, I mean, n- notoriously so, the last episode cuts to black. Right. So, I mean, you probably... Yeah, I turned it on, and there was a guy sitting there, and all of a sudden it went to black. That's not a very good representation of the show as a whole, though. You should you should try to watch you should watch the show. Well, a lot of people just listen to this show for like five minutes and then turn it off. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because on Twitter they say, "Oh, they're you know they're uh, reviewing Hollyweird." Yeah, and then for a half hour we don't even mention Hollyweird, <laughs> and so they they're like, "This is stupid." Yeah. <laughs> is that a signal? Are we are we to change format? No, not at all. Okay, good. No. All right. Well, enough of that. Um, and honestly. We mentioned a lot of stuff that happened in 2001. That's, That's about not, it. That is really about it. Yeah. I can't believe so much happened that year. It was a good year for the Roses. Right. Um, but I can't think of anything else important that happened. Me neither. How, how old were you uh, compared to when that was released? Now, last time you fucked me on this, mm-hmm. I was 26. Okay. Now, see, I was 26, too, so you couldn't have been. No. No, no was, you were 20. 20. That's right. You couldn't legally drink yet, and I was already an alcoholic. I didn't care. I didn't even start drinking until way after that. I didn't even care about drinking. You just care about getting that poontane. That's, that's all I cared about. That's why I'm... That's at 20, what, were you, what, were you, what was your main focus at 20 years old, honestly? I was going to ICC, and I was working, I think, a full-time job, and I was still living at home, actually. Nice. I, I moved out shortly after I turned 21, but yeah, I was yeah I was I had a girlfriend, a long term relationship, working full time and going to school, and that was my deal. Man. That was my jam. At you were 20. basically a forty year old man. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing that for you know probably a good fifteen twenty years. So yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, twenty six though, right? Yeah, getting up there, divisible by thirteen. Exactly. Like I said, need you know waist deep into my alcoholism. Right. How, how does okay? Slinging. What is the correlation between your alcoholism and then the the amount of women that? Because I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's a marriage maybe entwined in there somewhere. Yeah, there was. There was a, I, I was out already on that. That was. A, Were you between relation or marriages at that point? Yes. Okay, so okay. There's nine years between the marriages. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So th- this is a good opportunity to say how how did your alcoholism and women did, did that increase the number of oh. women? Tremendously. So, if so, a good note to the listeners: if you want to increase the number of women you slip in or sleep, slip, slip in, in, you just oh, slip geez. right in them. <laughs> like, no, whoop. Yeah, I mean, but the the reason why the number was so high was because I was unable to function and have a real relationship or have feelings or care about anybody except myself. You're describing me, and I'm not an alcoholic. Hmm. Coincidence? 
I think I think not. Twelve steps. First, you got to admit it, buddy. Uh, yeah, but maybe I maybe I do need to admit it. Oh boy, admit okay. it, hit it, and quit it. And then you know that's that's honestly my kind of my mantra for this whole show: hit it and quit it. Sure. I can't get attached to these television shows because there's only one episode, so I gotta quit it. Oh yeah, you you can't watch these shows and be like. I love these characters. I, I can get used to this. Because, yeah. <laughs> you, you, no, you can't. I want to make an emotional investment in these people. Sorry. They're not going to be there for you. Nope. It's a good idea if you're going to get that involved to, to look at the span of a series. Maybe after it's ended, go back and say, hey, you know what? They're going to be around for this amount of time. Prepare your heart for that. Right. Just just word of the wise. Just lock, lock it up now. Lock it up in under lock and key. Mm-hmm. Throw away the key. Right. Give it to a shark. Yeah, they'll be. I mean, hey, it's summer of the shark. Yep, they'll come to the surface. They'll snatch it right out of your hand. Why did we choose constant pain? Three simple reasons and a phantom. All right, uh, the phantom is it was in the aughts. And that's what we're doing right now. This we're is the doing- fourth season of Couch Pilots, and we focus on a decade at a time, ten episodes per decade. And right now we're in the in the aughts. And uh, we had to find it. It had to be readily available. Uh, it had to be free mm-hmm. because we have no budget. And it had to be a failed pilot, only one made. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Very good. And so you're probably at this point saying, you're right, I'm listening a half hour in. You're not talking anything about the show. Just cut to the chase. Where can I find this for myself? Well, I'll tell you, you can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice. And then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. Or if you must, you can go to... I think you can just go to YouTube. Yeah, that's the place to go. And I'm going to give you a little insight. The blue link that we were going to provide for this, mm-hmm. it is an HD, high oh, definition. Boy. Uh, this is a thrill. For people who have been with us from episode two, one, two, mm-hmm. when we watch crappy stuff that we can barely see or hear, this is going to be 10 minutes of HD quality. And, it, and not just like after 10 minutes it shuts off HD and goes to standard. This pilot is only ten minutes, right? It, yeah. So if you, if you have never, if you enjoy the show, but you're always hesitant to invest time into how bad some of these pilots are, invest your time into this because it's only ten minutes. It's actually less than ten minutes with the credits. Honestly, I think you can be in and out in eight minutes. Nine forty one. That's yeah. Well, I mean, with the credits too. Before, like, if you didn't want to oh, stop yeah. it at the credit, the credits I think go on for like a minute, a minute and a half. A lot of people involved with that in nine minutes. Yeah, but if you want to pay them tribute, I suppose. And I, I just want to quickly mention. I want to cl- quickly touch on our when I mentioned in our show notes our blue links. Um, so many different colored links out there. I don't want to dwell on this, but when you see our blue links attached to our, the Couch Pilots, you know it's a safe link. You know you can click on that without any kind of virus or spyware. You are safe with our blue links. Yep. So let me just go ahead and say that. And uh, and with that, let's take the plane off. Take off. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Very excited here. I love taking off with you. I love taking off with you, buddy. I, I feel love... safe in your arms. And I say, hey, you know what? You see John? He's got one golden cone, one, the plaque in the other hand. Yep. He's using <laughs> the plaque reflecting the light. I was going to say, the sun's setting. It's kind of a perfect time to really... It, it was almost as as uh, bright as the golden cone wow. that plaque was. Oh. What is this? What do we got? All right. We got somebody calling in on our, our Couch Pod's phone. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Who is this? This is Conrad. Oh, our good friend. Well, we guess we're going to a frequent flyer, a listener, Conrad. Um, I wouldn't say a friend because he's known to cause rifts. Hold on a second. Is this the same? That's interesting. Oh, oh, okay. I see what's going on here. This is the Conrad who's been dropping us all the fan feedback from California. Yeah. Hey, Conrad. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I, we'll see in a second here. I think, <laughs> Conrad. Okay. How, how did yeah. you? How did I'm you? Get, how did you get the private number to the jet? Oh, uh, you know, I, I have the internet. Oh, that, that's true. Did you put the? Did you put yeah. the number out on yeah. the internet? I did put the. I put the number out on the internet. Um, I okay. put it in a, and I also posted it in an ad in thirty-seven tattoo magazines. Oh, and, Con- and Conrad did your tattoos, right? Yeah, I see. The phone number is a matter of public record. That's at true. this point. That's interesting. So, Conrad, yeah. uh, you've been listening. You've listened, you've one of our six listeners that we have. <laughs> what do you think about this uh, this thing we're doing? This podcast. I, I think it's very informative. A uh, lot of lot of facts. We pride ourselves uh, on I our like facts. facts. 
I collect them. Uh, they're you know you guys are pretty interesting. Oh, Ooh. now do you do you collect our facts like trading cards and, and trade them with other frequent flyers? I do. Um, I laminate them. I, I write them on three by five cards and then I laminate them. Um, you know, and I mean it, it's pretty much me putting them in one pocket from my other pocket. And yeah. considering it a trade. That's a good method. Oh, so you trade amongst yourself. Oh, well, I don't want to lose any good ones. Right, yeah. Now, you can... You know? You, you know what you could probably do? Because uh, I know as a tattoo artist, I mean, you're just scraping by it. You're, you know, you're barely making any cash because nobody gets tattoos anymore nowadays, right? <laughs> no, it's 2016. Right. But uh, you can always... You can just set up a booth at like a Comic-Con and you can start selling the laminated facts. Good idea. That's, you know what? That's that's an idea. Very interesting idea. Uh, now I know from talking to you, and we've known each other a long time, but in you know on Facebook and such, you are very. You don't follow the one main rule that we have. We love having you as a listener. Don't get me wrong. We love having you on. The, I can't fault them that. Uh, we we know that when we push record, at least one person, and that's you, is going to listen, and we commend you for that. But we've got to kind of talk about. This rule that you keep breaking, the interesting fact rule. Now, do, do we need to clarify it for you, or do you have trouble with it, or you just don't give a rat's ass what the rule is? I just, I don't really live by the rules. Ah, I see. A true tattoo artist. Yeah, and and again, yeah. you know, I can't. I, I, can't I do what I want. It. Yeah, yeah. I I do what I want when I'm allowed to. Because <laughs> you're married. Yeah. Well, I will say this: we haven't, thankfully. We this is all fairly moot because we have not entered our interesting facts section of the show. So um, I, I don't know if you have a minute, Conrad. Do you want to stick around for some of our interest, the interesting facts section of the show? I I would love to hear these facts. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if you know, but we're listening or we watched a show called Constant Pain, and it was on the Nickelodeon channel. But before we enter the interesting facts section, we're going to talk about the summary of the pilot. So just to kind of pump the prime, Blake and I have already watched it. But this hasn't been released yet, obviously, so a lot of people don't know about it yet. But you kind of got an inside track, so let's do a summary of the pilot real quick. It sounds good to me. I, I actually watched it with my son this afternoon. Oh, did oh. you now? Oh, perfect. You, boy, you really are on the inside track. He's a frequent flyer gold member. Oh, oh okay. Well, that explains yeah. everything then. Perfect. Uh, throughout history, when ordinary people find themselves under the shadow of evil, the Payne family has answered the call of duty. Now Amanda Payne, the youngest of the next generation of the Payne family, is coming of age and preparing to inherit this awesome mantle of responsibility. Conrad, what do you think of that summary? Does it sound right? You know what? I feel a lot better now that I know um, that that's what the show was about. <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, and you know he's right. Now that I've heard that, you know, it sounds pretty accurate, yeah. All right, all right, so... So we just want to make sure that we're we're coasting in here. We're gonna yep. we're getting ready for the interesting facts section now. Again, Conrad, I I know you know the rule, but I got to go over it with you because of all the listeners, if you don't mind. Oh man. Okay, so oh, man. this is the interesting facts section. Jason has scoured the internet mm -hmm. and has found a number of facts dealing with constant pain, and he's going to read us those facts. But what we're asking the listeners and Conrad, we're asking you, please. Don't give us your opinion on these facts. Just absorb them, take them in, take a breath, and then if you want to, like, you know, do a little doodle sketch or something like a like a tattoo or something to to, to represent your feelings for it, that's great. But just don't tell us that they're interesting, okay? I'm not gonna lie, guys. Um, I am so excited right now. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, I, you sound I can't so, be held responsible. You sound I can't be so excited. <laughs> And, you know, I, I will say, you know, part of the burden lies on us because, again, we, we judge the facts just like in golf. We, we play them as they lie, but, right. but to some degree, we know how interesting they're going to be. So to some degree, we do take responsibility knowing that Conrad is, is about to hear some fairly impactful facts, and I don't, I don't want them – it's not fair for him to try to hold it in, right. but it is what we ask of our listeners. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and, and read a few here. Uh, this pilot was never greenlit for a TV series for two reasons. The first is that it was meant to have aired uh, in the fall of 2001. However, after the 9-11 incident, TV networks were sensitive in airing shows and movies that reference aircrafts crashing into a building, 
So Nickelodeon canned the proposal for a TV series made based off of this pilot. The second reason it was canceled is because the creator, Micah Wright, was uh, suspected of here, uh, spearheading a plan to unionize the Nickelodeon writing staff, which Nickelodeon didn't approve of, so they shelved the series as punishment. Wow. There it is. There, there, one, one whole fact. All right, Conrad, how are you feeling right now? You good? Well, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie. That's pretty interesting. Oh, uh, damn I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's the way I feel. Um, I'm a passenger. I'm not a pilot. Right, right, because we went to school. I'm not a pilot. We went to school for that. Um, oh, man. Um, we, know, we, we know. Mind is yeah. blown. Right. Mind is blown. Well, Conrad, I think before we go on to any more, because like I said, your mind is blown. Uh, you, we love having you. Uh, we're very, very happy to have you as part of the Frequent Flyer program. You've got thousands and thousands. Wait, is, this, is, this still, is this still part of the interesting facts segment? I've got one more fact here in a second. Can you handle one more? Uh, I'll, I'll try and keep it together. Okay. All right. Uh, had this aired on Nickelodeon back in the fall of 2001, it would have been the first anime-based action-oriented cartoon in its history, as well as the first anime-based Nicktoon. Oh, okay. you shut your mouth. <laughs> wow. Whoa. I've, wow. I, uh, man. I know, uh, I know the kind of feelings that these facts can evoke. And I know you know not to put any kind of qualifiers with them, but you're doing it, and you're really testing the limits of my patience right now, Conrad. I, I know we appreciate you as a, a frequent flyer, but I don't, I don't know why. You, it's like you, you want to punish us, even though it's obvious that you love us. I'm just going to say, I'm in, I'm in uh, trading card heaven right now. Do you know what I can do with all these facts? What, what are you going to do with them? <laughs> well, I'm going to write them on cards and then laminate them. <laughs> and then put them in your pocket. Yeah. For, yeah. for safekeeping. Maybe... Maybe I'll send some to you guys. Uh, doubles, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, comments. Uh, we'll take the comments, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the comments. Conrad, we're going to have to let you go. we got we got to really pay attention to the flight. But real quick, you say you watched it with your son, which is great. Spent some quality time with your t- kids. That's wonderful. Um, thank you for incorporating Couch Pilots into your family's life. Yes, thank you very much. It's a... Uh, it's become part of my daily routine, honestly, <laughs> guys. Awesome. Well, um, real quick, what was your rating? One to seven. Oh, um, I'm I'm going to give it a three. Okay. Okay. All right, Conrad. Thank you. It, my son would have given it an eight, though. Oh yeah. Oh nice. Well, we'll take just a heads up. We'll take the son and then yours and the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost. So we'll we'll give we'll say you gave it a five. How's that? That. That's fine by me. All right, buddy. Hey, thank you for calling in. we got to get this plane uh, back onto the right latitude and longitude. But thank you very much for the time, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Conrad. Thank you, guys. It's been a great flight. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. Bye. Wow. Nobody's ever used that number before. <laughs> yeah, it did, you know, just like the donate button on the FCF Network website. I thought it was getting a little dusty. <laughs> right. I was like, why did I make that number? <laughs> just like, why did I make that donate button? Nobody ever touches it. I, actually, I, I didn't know that was a phone. I just saw, I heard the buzzing, and I saw kind of the vibration, and I didn't realize, because it's one of those old style, like 1970s Air Force One style right. telephones. Incredible. Well, I, I, thank, I thank Conrad profusely for calling right. the number, for spending his time and his, his thoughts on this uh, pilot, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know why he, I don't know why he does that. I, you know, I think he's toying with this. Like I said, he is a tattoo artist, you know, he's a bad boy. And I think he just he lives by his own rules. He has his own credo. He has his own credo. Um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was wearing a Folsom Ink T-shirt around around the town. Yeah, um, giving some free advertisement for him, and it's ironic that he called us. But I think maybe we should take a flight to Folsom. Sure. And go see the prison. Obviously, I was, I was just going to ask. So that's where the prison was. Yeah. It was, now he was a tattoo artist. Did he? Uh, famously, Johnny Cash sang at Folsom. Right. Did he? Did he ever tattoo Johnny Cash? No, I don't. I don't know. He did not. Bummer. But he had tattooed me, which is like really super close. That's about as close as the like. You are the modern day equivalent to Johnny right. Cash. So maybe I mean I'll, I'll talk to him afterwards. But right. maybe if we fly out there on a flight, mm-hmm. maybe we can get some free tattoos. We should get some Couch Pilots logo tattoos on our foreheads. You want to do it? I, I was going to do it like right above my nipple. 
can we incorporate the nipple somehow? Like tattoo the nipple on the forehead? <laughs> yeah, can we tattoo our nipples on our forehead? Oh, you mean incorporate it in the design? I'm sure he, that'll work. He's too. An, he's an, he's the, he's the amazing artist. He's the one that did my um my uh, IBWIP urinal. Yeah, that's very good on yeah. your on your leg, right? Yeah. Do you think anyone's ever had like a third nipple tattooed onto them? I don't know. We should. God damn, we should ask. Him. Oh, hey, I, and we only receive calls on that too. We can't call out. Right. Hey, have you ever thought about getting your inside your lip tattooed? Every day. Every day, I think like about if that. We get we get a C and a P. Oh, inside? Yeah. I, inside. I always thought I'd put welcome there, like uh, unfold it like a welcome mat, but I like your idea better. All right, cool. Well, that was interesting facts, and so... Yeah, segment ooh. closed. Uh, Conrad did not Closing wait. Closing the book on Conrad. <laughs> I hope not. No. I hope he continues to listen, and, and no matter how horrible these pilots are, I hope he keeps watching with his boy. Now, let's break down the pilot of Constant Pain. Fly, this, is, this is in and, in and done quick. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, this is only nine and a half minutes, and we're going to talk about 15 to 25. I'll add it. <laughs> about it. We'll go, hopefully, we'll go a little quicker than that. It, it begins right away with an action-packed intro. You have explosions, mm-hmm. um, big, huge plane kind of things, people punching each other. Kind of like bold colors sweeping back and forth, kind of uh, stylized outlines of people doing action, receiving action. Oh, uh, yeah. But not not the kind you think. I mean, and this is like fighting stuff. It's not like let's manipul- be very clear. This yeah, because this is for Nickelodeon, right? Conrad's son watched this. We don't want him to, people people think he's like a horrible father letting his kid watch anim- anime porn. They were in physical aggression. Yeah, I don't think we have any pilots for an- uh, I almost said animal porn, but anime porn uh, porn for next uh, next season. Hmm. So we'll get into that at a later date. But th- it was very quick. And it was very action oriented, in which I enjoyed. And it's it's it kind of sets up the main characters. And the, to me, in my mind, there are really only two main characters. Right. There's Amanda Payne, the 13 or 14 year old young girl, and her father, I believe his name was Alex Payne. Yes. And he's yeah, Doc Payne, Doctor Payne, Doctor Doc Payne. Um, now, did you when you're watching this, did you kind of see a, a similarity between Doctor Payne and his daughter, and you and your daughter? Yeah, I, I mean, Dr. Payne and I have a very, like, okay, just to set the scene so people know, roughly, I bet he's about 6'4", I bet he weighs 240, it's a, just a, he's a shit brick house of muscle. Just like, just like you. So, I mean, I, that's, uh, that's only where the parallels begin. Oh, wow. And, and you got a, a young daughter that's sassy, you know, just like my daughter, um, and he's got the streaks of color in his hair. He invents uh, crazy inventions. So, I mean, almost, I feel like Micah Wright, the creator of Constant Pain, just ripped a page right out of my life. Wow. That's amazing. And it makes you, like, absorb yourself into the show, knowing that it was so close to you. I, I was looking at that feeling, I mean, like, did I, is this, I don't remember living this. Right. And it was a cartoon. Right. Now, the first scene is she, you know, she's going to figure out what she's going to wear to school, and she goes up to the computer, mm-hmm. and the computer's showing her all the different, like, the, the tops and the bottoms that she could match up. She matches them up, because there's, like, a hologram that shows what she would look like. Right. Then, pushes the button. Boop, boop. Look at that. That reminds me of Clueless. Do you remember that? Dress for six, at, yes. At Clueless, she had that huge thing. She had a computer program with, with doing a very something similar. And right before the scene where she gets dressed, it kind of pans over a city. Mm-hmm. And it's a very futuristic city. It doesn't give a city name. It's not like, oh, this is a futuristic New York. It's just, hey, this is where we are. Kind of rounded, uh, deco-style buildings, but it's obviously very tall, very ultra-modern. Spaceships kind of flying. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and when they come in, uh, it's... The song isn't Cantaloupe by Us Three. And I, I remember you had said you weren't familiar with that song. Mm, no. It was kind of a very jazzy song that was popular in the early 90s. It had, a, it had like kind of a lot of jazzy music in there. Do you remember that? No. No? Okay. Oh, I, I, oh from the episode? Yeah, right, I thought you yeah. meant the can, Cantaloupe song. I don't remember that. Yep. So, uh, yeah, she's getting ready, and she goes downstairs and says, Hey, Dad, I, I want to be late for school. Let's go. <laughs> Every kid... Wants to get to school. Doesn't want to be late for school. Everybody, every kid her age, 13, wants an education. Chomping at the bit. I don't want to be tardy. Don't give me no tardies. And he's working on something, and she kind of interrupts it, and he gets, his arm gets frozen with this pink stuff, and he breaks it off because he's just a wall of muscle. Sure. Boom, smash. And then they, and he throws her the keys. And she's like, hey, I'm driving? He says, you're not driving. We'll go warm up the vehicle. Can you describe this vehicle they're in? Um... It's like a spaceship, hot air balloon, 
pirate ship kind of thing. It's, yeah. It's very, it's very futuristic, yeah. but then it has a very steampunkish, maybe. Yeah, it, yeah, and I think steampunk is kind of like saying it's like 1920s to 1940s era style. Again, kind of that deco, a lot of round, smooth, but then also infused with futuristic technology. Gears. And- Gear, and yeah, and like the, the big hot air balloons, like you said. A lot of these vehicles uh, like open up and have like big hot air balloons. Like right, why? Up. If you have a jet, why do you need a hair balloon? <laughs> like um, I can go really fast to where I want to be or push the button and I can take my time. Led Zeppelin all the way. I don't get it. So they get in. They get in the vehicle and they're on their way. And all of a sudden, a dude falls out of the sky. He looks like a um, kind of a classic sailor with the striped shirt and the mustache and the hat. little hat. Yeah. And he lands right on their windshield. <laughs> Boom! Out of nowhere, out of space, out of the sky. Then they look up and they see a ship. And they're like, what's going on here? And yeah, I, it's a big, huge, like, freighter ship is what it was. And this is how you know it's a kid's show. Because the dude, obviously they're, they're hundreds of feet in the air. The guy falls on their windshield, and then he kind of falls off. But they show him land on something that wouldn't kill him. Right. So that's how you kind of know it's a kid's show. If it's, a, if it's not, that guy's dead. Oh, yeah, squish like a... And he didn't cuss one time. He didn't be like, oh, shit. I would have, I would have said that and so much worse. Like, like poop. Oh, doo-doo. I would have screamed Hol- doo-doo the whole way Holy down. darn it. Blood fart city. Don't, oh, get, don't get me started. Jeez. We got so, to clean it up. We got to clean it up. You're right. I'm sorry, folks. So he falls down. He's safe. And then they're like, well, let's, uh, what, something's going on. There's an event happening. So they kind of go higher. And they come across, like you said, yeah, like this big, almost golden-colored ship, like a freight ship or something. Right. There was nothing fancy about it or anything no. like that. It wasn't like a cruise ship. It was, it was obviously – it was like a – it was like a UPS van, but yeah, a, a ship. But massive. Massive. Really massive. They get to the top, and what do they see up there? Like a bug, like a bug ship or something? And like they a, recognize the ship, yeah, too. Yeah, it's like, that. that's Uncle Milton's ship. I'm like, yep. what? Who's Uncle Milton? Yeah, and again, you know, this is a quick pilot, and they throw a lot of information, and they don't explain everything. And right. honestly, with only eight, nine minutes, I don't expect them to. Right. But they, to me, they really held our attention because it is pretty much nonstop action from the beginning. Right, and you can tell, like, very early on, it, it, the relationship between the daughter and the father is very, very close because yeah. the mother is nowhere to be found. Oh, yeah. That's and that, right. and that's, that, that's, that really took me at first. I was like, where's, where's the mom? She should be helping her get ready for school. Well, he looked at the picture right before they left, and it was a picture of the three uh, of them, Amanda, a little younger, and kind of at that moment, you know, the mom is gone. R.I.P. R.I.P. mom. Rip mom. Or spell it backwards. Um, M-O-M? Yep. Okay, very good. So she's dead, and the two of them are, again, yeah, very close. They kind of playfully barb each other a little bit. But um, when they get to the top there, and they recognize that plane, and it's their uncle. You said Milton, right? Yeah, it's like a, it looks like a it looks like a fly. Like yeah, a it ship, does. It's like a fly it has like wings and like a big black head on it. Yeah, it's a little compared to this freighter. It's real little. And they're like they're like Uncle Milton's ship is attacking this thing. Right. And immediately, Alex Payne says, "You know what? I'm gonna take care of this. Yeah. This is my this is my family. We shouldn't we, we take care of our own trash." And he jumps yeah, from this plane. Yeah. Th- there's no like. Like, if we were to open the window of this ship right now, right. we'd all be dead. We'd be sucked out and, yeah, destroyed. But in this cartoon, you can open windows, you can jump off of your plane and just land on another plane. Like, he didn't just, you know, he didn't bring the plane down, you know, right on right. top of it and then yeah. jump out, and, you know. He just said, I'm not, we don't have time for us to land on this thing. No. I'm jumping off. We're probably two, two and a half minutes into this episode at this point, and this is where the parallels between myself and Dr. Payne end. Because oh. you won't find me jumping out of some, you know, God steampunk. God steampunk yeah. ship. Thank no you. way. I wouldn't let you. If you try to jump out of this plane, it's not a steampunk plane, but if, if you were trying to jump out of this plane, I'd be like, no, Jason, you can't do that. Right. Uh, Conrad on the phone earlier made it very clear that he was not a pilot. He was just a sure, passenger. Yeah. And it, but you and I, we, we've taken the courses. We know that if someone tries to jump yeah. out, we stop them. We went to the Phoenix... Online university, yep. got our pilot's license. Yeah, you'd be hard up to find a better online school for pilots. Oh, uh, Fitzgerald, the right. NFL football player. He got his degree. Yeah. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. I agreed. So the, he, Dr. Payne, he lands on the ship. He kinda, uh, They're holding a few people hostage. They're about ready to mess them up because they, they threw that guy off the plane. Right. They, they tossed him off. Instead, you know, again, you don't want to see him shoot him or chop his head off or anything. They just, just throw him out into the abyss of land. Right. Um, then all of a sudden, 
Her dad starts just kicking everybody's ass. Oh, big time. Just, I mean, there's one of him, and there's about 50 of these guys. And he's karate chopping, kicking, you know, power punching, because he's yep. like a brick shit house. German suplex. And then one of the guys falls out of the plane again, lands on top of um, Amanda, because all of a sudden she's driving the plane. The last thing Alex said before he jumped, he's like, put it on auto- autopilot, and he leaves. He never said, hey, I'm gonna, he never said, I'm going to go jump out of this thing. He just does it and says, put on autopilot. So she's kind of drifted along there, and yeah, one of those uh, henchmen falls right onto their her, uh, aircraft. With that... With the box, didn't it? Didn't I think the box goes first, and it lands on the back. There's right. some there's some crate that they're after. There's something in this box, and we don't know what it is. And it's landed on the back of Amanda's plane, and then the henchman gets thrown right onto that very same plane. She starts kicking his ass. I yeah. mean, even at 13 years old, she's punching and kicking just like her daddy. She gave him the benefit of the doubt that he punches through her windshield. He pulls her out of it. Right, out Pretty of the little, He he punches a little hole into the windshield and sucks her out of that little yeah. hole. And she like karate chops him off, and then she like grabs him by the suspenders and brings him back. And then he tries to attack her again, and she says, "You know what? No." And he and she kicks him right off. But then, of course, his parachute opens because he's not. No one dies. No. Um. There's no such thing as gravity. No. There's no. It's all just a big farce. At 13 years, I, he, it's amazing she can kick so much, so much ass and not be scared. She did. She wasn't shaking like no. most 13 year old girls would be in the, you know, uh, in the plane. What, what do I do now? You know, and it's not like she just yeah. whipped her hands out there, slap style. She took oh. a practiced stance sure. against this man. She yeah. Took a, yeah, exactly. She was taking Craw McGraw or something. Uh, and then Tim McGraw. Tim. She was taking Tim McGraw. Indian outlaw. Platinum. <laughs> uh, in, in, back inside, uh, Doc continues to whip ass throughout. The, and at this point, the parallels between myself and him end, but the parallels between him and another show that I enjoy uh, called uh, The Venture Brothers that was, um, is and maybe, or was or maybe still is on the cart, uh, Adult Swim network. It's a great adult show about – it's kind of a take on um, – the Hardy Boys and like kind of Johnny Quest, where you have this doctor, these two boys, and then they got this tough bodyguard, and he's a cussing, sex having, mega ass kicker. Sounds a lot like me. Just uh, sounds exactly like you, man. And that's what this guy is doing inside. He's kind of a culmination of these characters, and they're just whipping huge ass. And he's also he's a smart dude too, so he creates stuff. And and to me, I don't know if you have you said you've never seen Venture Brothers. Is that right? No, I have not. And, and you're not much of a cartoon guy, probably. No, not really. No. I I. I I find it a little, a little childish. A little childish. I'm sorry. Sorry. I enjoy Venture Brothers, and I think I watch a lot of anime porn. Does that count? I, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Okay. All right. Cool. Any kind in particular you're into? You like the tentacle stuff? Yes, tentacle stuff all the way. Yeah. Um, to me, it's an art form. It's, sure. Uh, sure. It's not about yeah. it's not about manipulating myself while watching it. It's about watching it and appreciating the artistic uh, endeavor. To a degree, I have I, I understand because you know you ha- there has to be a certain understanding of the human body and the ability to you know inc- and, like fully get that on the screen. Sure. So I, I I I understand what you're saying. I digress. I apologize. No, that's fine. Uh, he's he's kicking some butt inside. They go back to a man outside. There's another dude on the side of the plane, and she pulls his ripcord and he flies away too. Yeah. So now she's just drifting through the air, trying to keep pace with this this mega freighter. So in case, when her dad, if he appears again, she's able to help him. Right. She doesn't, you know, she can't see him. And then, uh, he, so the, the dad meets up against the bad guy, face to face with the bad guy. And it's, again, it's uncle Milton. And he's like, you know what? We're not going to, you know, you're not in my family anymore. You're not, you, my family doesn't do this. My brother wouldn't. My brother died a long time ago. Right. You're not, you're whoever you are. And, and I, and I wish mine had to. <laughs> Maybe you should send him a link. Maybe you should send him a blue link of this show. He's an idiot. He couldn't even. He couldn't even. He could not even click that link to watch oh. this fucking video. I was gonna say maybe you could get the subtle hint. Maybe not. <laughs> but this, I, I tell you, some of the artistic uh, integrity they took with this. It's like his hair goes up. He's got hair kind of wisping on either side and a long beard, and all of them have got like a, a white streak through them. Mm-hmm. It's very stylized. And, and his his brother are clearly the brains and, and the bronze and the the bad guy I think is mainly brains too. He's sure. a smart guy, and so he comes at his brother and he shoots like this this green ray at him. Or yeah, something. this like electric beams come out of his hands. And yeah, why is it? I mean, we watched a lot of stuff where it's green, green, 
lasers coming out of the eyes, coming out of the, you know, what's what's the significance of green, you think? I, I honestly don't know. I think you look at some of the evil characters in, like, Star Wars, they all have red beams, and some, right. of, the, some of the good guys have green red beams. Red beams and rice don't miss her. <laughs> right? That might be a key. <laughs> in, uh, in Heat, Vision, and Jack, he had green right. eyes, right? I, I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, people tie it to aliens sure, or be. something from beyond. So, you know, they're, they're, they start battling each other. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, the brother is shooting these green rays, and everything is blowing up around um, Alex. Alex Payne. Um, so he starts running, you know, and boom, boom. It just seemed like it was like it was all these timed landmines, but actually, it was he, his brother was flinging these green electrical currents. He had started this series of, like a domino sure. effect. It's taken down the whole thing. And after he does that, a chute opens, and his brother falls out the bottom to safety. He falls out Milton. the bottom of the ship. Milton, Milton does, right. But you're right. He's running through just like Indiana Jones, all oh, these yeah. perfectly timed explosions where he's running. He's jumping through, closing doors, and then finally he uses a gadget to like pop out the top where he sees his daughter. But also over there, you got Uncle Milton who landed on the plane as well. Everyone's landed on Amanda's plane. Every, it's like a plane magnet. Right. I wish our I wish our plane was like that, like a chick magnet. No, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Just, just flying through the air, just girls raining out of the sky. What was that last part you did? What is that? When their vagina hits the windshield. <laughs> that hey, you know what? That's exactly what I thought you were doing until this part. My grandma could have listened to it, but now, <laughs> nope. Sorry, Gam Gam. So he sees Uncle, he sees uh, his brother over there on top of Amanda's plane, and he smashes the crate. He gets whatever's in there that he wants, and then he flies away. Takes off. Yep. And now there's a big, huge explosion yeah. of the freighter. The whole freighter explodes. Yep. And Amanda doesn't know if her dad is dead or alive because she yeah. didn't see him coming out. Right. All of a sudden, hops into the plane, all bruised up. His clothes are all tattered. He's got like a black eye. Uh, no third degree burns. No, you thankfully. Know. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I'm going to be late to school. And dad says, let's go. I don't want you to be late to school. Just like she thought her dad was dead. Yeah, for like three seconds, and then all of a sudden went. So you know what? Life's fine. Complete one eighty. You know what? Give me to school now. I don't, I don't want to know what happened in there. I'm sure I'm glad you're not dead, but you need to get me to school. Right, right. And so I got a biology funny. test, and you're safe, and that's all that matters. But let's let's. I got to go to biology, and that's exactly what they do. They land at school. She gets out, thanks him. He says, "I'll be back at three thirty to pick you up." She goes inside, sees some classmates, and she's like, "You never, you never believe what happened to me." Yeah. And the kid says, "What? Your dad saved the world again?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah that." But I got, I got to fly the plane. <laughs> I got to fly the plane like a typical teenager. End of end of show. End of show. Nine minutes and forty one seconds, just like we did. End of show, but not the end of this show. Let's hear a quick promo from our boys over at uh, we want to hear Low Blow. You like those guys? Yeah, yeah, I like them too. Are you sick of spoiled white people and Donald Trump bringing you the news you could care less about? Are you sick of trolling the interwebs for penis-related news only to end up flaccid? Do you lust for Florida only the way a mother lover can? Then look no further than Fakakta Comedy Funhouse's Low Blow Podcast with Adam Z and Dave Rowan. Streaming live every week at lowblowpodcast.net and available for download Thursdays at fcfnetwork.com. Appropriately inappropriate. Oh! Um... I think it's okay to announce this. Yeah. Uh, September 24th, the next FCF Network podcast marathon. It's official. It's official. And we, uh, I was going to say it's for IBWIP, but I mean, we'll go into detail on IBWIP, so folks listen to that. But the challenge is on. The smack talking has begun. Oh, has it now? Oh, yeah. They're sending uh, threatening pictures. I'll show this to you later. They're uh, calling us out and doing the eye stuff. They're, they're doing eye stuff? Yeah. <laughs> they're oh. pointing at their eyes and then. Yeah, and, I don't like that. Yeah, and so it's 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 a friendly rivalry, but a rivalry nonetheless. They will win. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we will dominate <laughs> with our eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. I don't do any eye stuff. I keep my eyes closed. Um, I don't want. I don't know what those homosexual guys do in <laughs> Chicago. I love, and oh, oh, Dan also Dave's been flirting with me, so I think what his plan is. Well, Dave's Dave is legitimately the gay one. Sure. Okay. Um, How's he been flirting with you? Eye stuff. <laughs> Eye stuff, finger stuff, <laughs> butt stuff. No, but telling me he's gonna he he I you know d- manipulate me with his feet and stuff. Well, I I I truly am oblivious to all these uh, these stuff. comments and threats. We shouldn't worry about that. 
But well, I tell you what, our listeners should uh, worry about is if you're not subscribed to Low Blow Podcast. There's a show that comes out every week with a couple of great funny guys out of the Chicago area uh, digging into just bizarre news stories and putting their own unique twist on it. Sure. What powerful personalities these guys have, and uh, who better to describe some of the odd news stories of the days than these two? It's a, it's a, we're really good friends with them. It's just a friendly competition that we're going to win. That's right. Uh, I do also want to mention before we go on to um, another local podcast that we've talked about um, um, a little bit. Uh, it's called How Simp Sees It. Uh, it's a really cool podcast where they go and they review movies every week. They go live to the theater, and like clockwork, this show comes out. Uh, check out How Simp Sees It, and we're going to put a link to their Kickstarter. These guys have been doing it for years now, and they're ready to upgrade. They've got a fan base, and they're they're ready to upgrade their studio, and you can help them out. They're right here in the Peoria area. And uh, just another great local show. Not necessarily part of the FCF network. Maybe someday. Who knows? I love them. And they've, pr- they've been nice enough to promote us. But go check out their Kickstarter page. Go to kickstarter.com and just type in the top of the page on the search, How Simp Sees It. And you, too, can they – have, they have levels of prizes, too. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you can be on their show. If you, if you donate enough, you can name their new studio. Oh. Now, that'd be cool. You can you can name it after yourself. <laughs> that's what I, should, I would do. I would, I, I would put IBWIP Studios. <laughs> we should just. That's how we should spend all of our money just naming people's. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we got this, buddy. We sure do. So check out not only check out Low Blow Podcast, but check out How Sim Sees It. You can uh, subscribe to both shows in iTunes and, and check them out. Great stuff. Now uh, let's get into a little turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. I think it was said during the interesting facts section that there's a couple reasons this didn't work. And so I'm going to lean pretty heavily on those things. And that is that the show came out around the time of 9-11. Right. And there's a lot of violence and playing. I would crashing. think that you would have said something about that at the beginning of the show, like when you were going through like uh, stuff that happened during that year. I would have thought you would have said. Oh, something. the okay, the portion where we kind of set the tone for put sure. put our viewers in the mind of set you, of yeah. Why? Um, you know, nine eleven to me, first of all, inside job, right? For sure. So is inside job. So to me, it it cancels it out. Were a couple thousand people killed? Sure, but a couple thousand people die every day, right? To me, the events of nine eleven is very trivial and didn't really have repercussions wow. on wow. that day or any day going forward. Wow. So I mean, that's a bold stance to take. Maybe very bold stance. Um, I, I, do you have a different opinion on, on the events of September 11, thousand? Well, I I, or I do think it was an inside job. I agree with you there, but saying that it's trivial, that's like what if our ship, our plane, runs into a building and what? I mean, even if two people die, me and you, I would. Well, I would never allow that to happen. If some terrorist but, came aboard, but you're all you do is give it up and bring it down. I got to do all this know. stuff in the middle. They're not going to bother the plane when it's going up, That's and they're true. not going to bother the plane when it's going down because they're not going down because right, not not on purpose. So it's really left up to you. Yeah, and so you're like, oh, I'll handle it. What are you going to do? I, I mean, honestly, at that point, I'm, I'm fairly paralyzed. I suppose I, I can only get it up and then take it down. So yeah, I, there's not much I could do. Well, can I? Let me ask this: Is there anything that you could do? Well, I would zigzag the plane. Yeah. So they couldn't like get their balance. Yeah. <laughs> they drop their box cutters. Yep. And then, hopefully, our stewardess, Molly, would then use her ninja skills, such as Amanda, and just karate chop them, throw them out the window. I did not know this about our stewardess. Oh, yeah. That's, that's where we met. She's trained in the dark arts? Yeah. We, we met at uh, a dark arts ninja convention. Wow. I was wanting to get her autograph. So NinjaCon? Yeah, NinjaCon. I was in line for six hours to get her autograph. Finally, it was my turn. It was 6 o'clock. I was the last one to go. And I said, would you like to go on a date? And she said. What'd she say? Well, I just told you what she said. She's a ninja. Oh, okay. So she said it silently. She said it silently. I was like, sweet. I got a hotel room. Let's go. And we went and hit it, quit it, and next thing you know, we're married. Was that the ninja con that Tim McGraw performed at? Yes. He did the opening ceremonies. American Ninja? Mm Mm-hmm. American Ninja Warrior. Fantastic. So incredible. I didn't wow. I learned so much about you week after yeah. week. <sighs> so we know that there was that portion of it, that it was this the country was sensitive 
because of some of the most you unlike know, terroristic. you, unlike me, okay. yeah, yeah. And then also the unionization of writers, which Nick Lodeon was against, and the creator of the show was apparently spearheading. Hmm. So those are the two reasons I think it probably did get canceled. But how about us? What do we think? Is there anything else in this show that maybe they could have done a little bit better, or maybe they? I don't know, something that, a flaw that you saw that could be improved. Well, for me, I mean, I understand cartoons are, are short. You know, that's, kids have a short attention span. I mm-hmm. understand that. But, you know, a 10-minute cartoon, although it works like on Adult Slim, they're even 15 minutes there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 10 minutes. And I understand there's commercials. You probably have one commercial break. That's three minutes. That's 13 minutes, you know. Sure. But I feel like it needed to be a 30-minute cartoon i feel like we need to know you know yeah you're you're, you're setting a lot of storyline up but i think it could have went more in depth and set better of a, a foundation a better foundation i think that's a lot of problems with the pilots that we had there they're quick they want to get them out they want to shove a bunch of information in dark man that's a great example right. of one. you want to shove all this information in but to to connect with the show to a viewer to to uh, Let's start from the start. Let's get an understanding. Yeah, let's understand. Game of Thrones, when they first started the first episode, were people just slaying and killing each other? I don't know. I've never seen it. Me neither. <laughs> I, I will say this about uh, Constant Pain, though. I This is, the, obviously, like we said, it's only nine minutes. It's a, it's a, I don't know if it's a teaser. I don't know what their plans were going forward. I, too, would imagine this as, you know, like a 22, 23-minute episode show. I think it would benefit from that. Maybe it was just trying to pack a bunch of action. Maybe maybe this was never canon. Maybe yeah, this was a steroid action steroid show. We I mean we kind of brought it down a little bit the mm-hmm. action sense of it. But when you watch it, I mean it's just bam 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 bam. 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 I mean we drug it out. We we sure. we, we drug it out. For, for, <laughs> I I think they were showing you what this show is capable of doing. Like I said, it may not have been canon what they were doing, but it was just saying hey. Look at the possibilities. Sure. Look at the settings we're in, and look at the action we could produce. Eye candy. They yeah. were, it was an eye candy. Yeah, just a blast of eye candy right to your cranial cortex. Right, but because when I was on like um, internet dating sites and stuff, yeah, I didn't put just a picture of my face on there. What else did you put a picture? I just of? put a picture of my penis. Really? Just bam! Show them, show them the goods. A lot of times, you you can take a couple pictures and then arrange which one you wanted first. What what picture? Did you, what was your profile pic? Uh, my penis. So do you feel like your penis is better sells who you are versus your face? Oh, yes. By, look at me. You can go to our YouTube page. You know, I, I, I have not seen your penis, so I can't really compare the two to tell you which one I, I think would be a better representation of you. But I do want to also ask, did you put anything in the picture of your penis for scale so someone could be like, oh, I have a rough idea of how... how yeah, I had one of those miniature um, soda can, little plastic miniature soda can that was a, it was a pencil sharpener. Right. So I put that up next to it, so it made it look like my penis was huge because it, was, it wasn't a real soda can. But, okay. And I, I, I totally understand the logic of that, but don't you think there is a point where it's diminishing returns after the penis is just so big to where girls are like, you know what? I like the position of my hip, my hip bones right now. I don't want them separated. You know what I'm saying? You've got to keep them separated. Is that, you think that's what the offspring was trying to tell us? Yes. <laughs> they knew about internet dating. They knew about other stuff. It's fine. Believe me, I know. Dexter I'm Holland from the Offspring was like, "We got to, we got to get a penis so big that it keeps the bones separated." separated. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. As in some of these pilots that have only one episode, sometimes there's not a lot of information out there. I found that to be the case with Constant Pain. Okay. Uh, and it's funny, too, because you feel like some of the ones that are flying under the radar, the people involved would be more accessible. Not the case. I reached out to Michael Wright to say, hey, we're doing this episode. Is there anything you'd like to add? Anything else besides the known behind-the-scenes stuff that maybe we should know about or we could talk about on the program? Nothing. Hmm. I'm two for two. Well, I'm two for three. With getting famous people to respond, Michael Ian Black, and then you know, I really, I really, truly hate to open the book on Mason Reese. You got to, but he, Mason Reese did get back to you, right? Right. And the only person not to get back to me, I know who it is, was a Blondie. What's her name? Victoria Jackson. Victoria Jackson. And I think it was because she was teetoting and didn't have time to, you know, she was working on that fat, huge ass of hers and that 
old <laughs> flappy face that she's got now after being such a hot piece of ass. Sorry, Victoria Jackson, you should have got back to us, and now we got to run you up through it. <laughs> right. Conrad hey. and three other people are really getting a heavy dose of negativity on Victoria <laughs> Jackson. It's going to change their lives and their views. <laughs> But that's all right. Well, he may he may he may still get back. To may us. he rest in peace. May, and may may Mike can rest in peace as well. Go to IMDb. Score of eight. That's wow. a pretty high score. That's a really high score. There's not a lot of scores on it. Like I think there's maybe six seven people had rated it. That's a high score. Very high. One review on there. Someone gave it ten out of ten scars. What they say? Uh, a glimpse into a new series that was short lived and before it could even launch. Uh, somehow I missed out on this when it originally aired, but I managed to discover and catch up on this uh, less than three months ago on YouTube, which which made up for it. What do you have to catch up on? It was nine minutes. Yeah, I don't know. Jeez. I'm so behind on these minutes. I'm so behind on these abstract uh, animated pilots that never aired. I'm so, uh, and I just have to say, I'm really glad I did excavate this lost gem. I love it. Uh, had they this, stole that from you. I really, you know, yeah. I, I, I've talked at length about how we dig up these precious uh, gems and minerals, and, and we, yeah. But that's that's okay. Uh, uh, Dewalk one from Hylia, Florida. None of those. I know Florida, but none of those other things seem like words. No, it's all just made up stuff. They don't want to. They don't want to know where you're from. Um, had this been expanded, it would have become another one of my favorites. Um, not only of the Nicktoons, but also cartoons in general. One of the other genres, or one of the subgenres of this featurette, is known as steampunk, which I wasn't even aware of until reading about it on Wikipedia a while back, and now it's got me so captivated, I've actually been thinking about buying my first book in the subgenre eventually. Jeez. A lot of eventuallys, and I finally caught up on You know what? You know what? Don't walk one from Hello, yeah, Florida. Do- just, just put your... <laughs> you didn't even spend enough time to get it, a man. good screen name. God. Stop waiting around. Just pull the trigger on these things. Right. What, what, is, what is going on in your life? You're like, I, I, I got to bring it back. I, I, I'm going to put this on the shelf. I'm going to get to it at a later date. Yeah. What's going on in our life? Yeah. yeah I, uh, so I read through the rest of this, and he's kind of crapping on modern-day Nicktoons, which, again, someday we'll, someone will look back as classic. It always is like that. But sure. he, he really likes the series, and I can't say that I blame him. But that was the only review that I saw out there. There there's some forums where they talk about what we talked about concerning why it was why it was canceled, but not a lot of reviews. We're out finding there. a lot more reviews about the older shows that we watch than uh, the less and less of the newer shows we get to. That's, That's weird. That's true. There's that and honestly, I think some people probably put these reviews out there based on our rules of is it available? And and I don't know how long this one's available for. But who knows? And who, maybe someday it'll grow in popularity. Maybe because of this episode, it'll grow in prop- popularity. Oh, most definitely. All seven people are going to watch this, and the YouTube guy that has that YouTube page is be like, "Damn, yeah." And you know what? You can thank the Couch Pilots. Couch Pilots, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCA Airport. Local time is eleven eleven, and the temperature is sixty five degrees. For your safety and comfort. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. I grew up playing with Lincoln Logs at my grandparents' house. You ever play Lincoln Logs? Yeah, I used to stick them up my pee hole. Oh, my God. Every... It, 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 yeah, no, okay, okay like that's fine. We're just going to move past okay. that. I'm not sure what... All right, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. Lincoln Logs. <sighs> yeah, Lincoln Logs. Uh, free from any... Great to put up your pee hole. No, you see... You went right back to it. Listen. I love when you get angry I'm me. building a metaphor here. Okay. Meta, meta milk boner? I'm building a Lincoln log milk boner okay. here. And action. First of all, you stick them up your pee hole. God damn it. What are you doing to me? You're changing me in some court, sort of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyda Lincoln log in my pee hole. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is that this show is like building a Lincoln log cabin. You got to set the base. You got to build it up. You got to create some windows. You got to put the rafters on there. You slowly. We're, we're building right. an entire. We're painting an entire picture for you here. And the last thing we do here is we look towards our our system of rating. And it's the little chimney at the end. We just put the little wooden chimney at the top. And that's what we're about to do now. We're going to put the icing on the cake that is this log cabin with our ratings. <clears throat> all right, let's do it. It's a one through seven rating. We take it from all the classic characters from the television show Wings. Uh, the one score is the worst one you can get. That relates to the character Roy Biggins, who's a big, fat piece of shit. We hate him. 
We hate him hard. I hate. Oh God! You right. know what? If I had Mr. Shram who played him, if I had his address, I'd go up there. I'd beat him over the head with a wooden stick. Oh, I swear to God, I'd do an aluminum bat. The way? Oh, would you? Yeah. The way they treated those Hackett boys? Horrible. Those Hackett boys were good, homegrown fellas. Yep. Just trying to keep their airline afloat, make a living, have a nice aviator jacket, and get in some poontang. That's all they were trying to do. Agreed. And Roy Biggins is always trying to fuck it up. He was. And speaking of those Hackett boys, the top of the scale, a seven, the best you can have, Brian Hackett. The, the fun, the fun Hackett. The one who's not uptight and straight-laced and organized. The, the messy, silly, funny Hackett. Yeah, that's like us. Yeah, just a couple messy, silly guys. Hey! So, now I turn to you, Blake. Using our wing scale, how would you rate constant pain? All right. On a prior recording, <laughs> I gave this a very low score. Mm-hmm. But after having two weeks to think about it and watching it over again, right. I'm going to give it a four. Give it a four. I'm going to give okay. it a four. Um, I'm not really into cartoons. It was a lot of action. It was well drawn. No if bucks you, and blondes. If, no bucks and blondes. But if you watch it in HD, it's even better. I think that was a big thing. I watched it in HD. It was a lot better. Um, I do think it was too short. I needed a little bit more. I'm going to give it a four. That's what she said. What? That's what she said. What does that mean? It's too short. I need a little bit who, more. Who, as, as, it, as it relates to penis size. Is that what they say to you? Because they don't say that to me. Yeah. Right. See, I, I, made the, I made the mistake of putting an actual Coke can next to mine. <laughs> one, of the, one of the tall boy ones. <laughs> I can just picture that. <laughs> are, you, are you picturing my penis next to a tall boy Coke? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wait. Hold on. I wanted to do something really cool for the just for our, our video watchers on YouTube. Ask me to give my score for the score. And Blake, action. So, Blake, I turn to you. And how do you rate, using our wings scale, how do you rate constant pain? Well, I rated a four. Nice. Wow. Better than a Lincoln log up your urethra. Okay, and now I turn to myself, which is very difficult to do. <laughs> Mostly in a small cockpit. There's not a lot of room. i got to really move fast. I, li- I-, I like this. I liked Constant Pain. I don't think it was meant to be as short as it was. I think it was just a, a taste for the network to say, hey, suck on this. You're going to love it. Give us some more money so we can make this a little longer. That's what I think, and that's what she said. And I think I, I personally I, I look at modern day cartoons and it's all computer animated. I love drawn cartoons. Part of the appeal of The Simpsons, you know. I grew up watching Bugs Bunny. I love Futurama. I'll, I'll watch Family Guy. That's a funny show, but I love the hand drawn cartoons. Right. That to me is an appeal. It's heavy on action. A lot of these stuff is kind of silliness. This is heavy on action. I give Constant Pain a five. Wow. I give it a five. All right. Sounds well good. deserved. Four and fives. Yes, and, and with that. We close the book on Mason Reese forever, and, and also constant pain. But we're not done. Please join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of Lost in Oz. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. This is a new take on the fictional world of Oz as created by author L. Frank Baum, where a 20-something-year-old woman who leads a revolt against the powers that be in the mythical other world. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, and you'll get the entire episode. We're not going to do you wrong. I can imagine a world where someone would give you part of an episode, or maybe another episode entirely. We would never do that to you. No, we're going to give you an hour and 20 minutes about a, we're, we're, We dissect these yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. We spent an hour and 20 minutes informing you yeah. about a nine-minute cartoon. Absolutely. I'm proud of it. We're proud. We're proud to do it. Or we, actually, to be honest with you, we spent two hours and forty minutes because we recorded this once already and it didn't work. A little peek behind the curtain, which goes well with the Oz. Ah, very good. Uh, and if you like that, and so it's so much more available on YouTube. If you don't want to subscribe to our show, which would be silly, you can search Lost and Oz Pilot on there as well. Um, Couch Pilots Podcast at Gmail dot com. Go to uh, go to Twitter. Search Couch Pilots Pod. Go to Instagram. There's a thing associated with us on there, I assume. Yeah, uh, we post all the show art from the IBWIP one. Okay. Um, Tumblr. There's a Couch Pilots oh, Tumblr, Tumblr page right. as well. Um, iTunes. This is very important. Conrad, tell everybody in California to go on iTunes. Give us a rating. It's everybody in California. They, they have nothing better to That's do. That's a tall order. There's no rain. 
Right. So they can't be swimming. Rain often stops me from getting out and doing things or contacting exactly. people. Exactly. And he does not have that obstacle. No, he doesn't have the obstacle. I know. Like he said, it's 2016. Nobody's getting tattoos anymore. The inkwell is dried up. Exactly. So Conrad, go out in front of Folsom Inc. Mm-hmm. And just start hollering Couch Pilots links. You know, yeah. HTTP semicolon backslash backslash www dot. Whatever it is. Whatever. Whatever we send you and you ultimately put on that sandwich board and then scream out. I, you know what? That would be a cool tattoo is to get our links tattooed on the back. Our links tattooed on the back of our legs. Yeah, so people behind us can see them. And you know what that is? That's coming. That's coming down the line. That's wearable technology. High five to that. High five it. <laughs> nice. Uh, any last words for our frequent flyers before we, uh, before we sail off? If you want points, if you want um, surprise prizes, if you Ooh, want a pair, yeah. these pair of these aviator glasses that I'm wearing right now uh, that you can see on our Couch Pilots YouTube page, uh, I'm going to sign them. You're going to sign them as I'll soon as this is over. Sure. Yep. Um, fan feedback, emails, reviews, l- shared links. You accumulate points. We have a, a drove of people ready to sit in this chair next to us, and we want you to be part of that. If you're a frequent flyer, then you've already heard some of them come in here. You've already heard of some of the prize distribution distribution that we've done. Signed aviator glasses. Uh, to me, the most valuable one, the surprise prize. Oh, definitely. You don't ever know what it is. It could, right. We could pull up in the jet in your driveway. Yep. You don't know. Just just email us and say you won a surprise prize. You got it. We'll look on the Pachinko machine, see how many points you have. Yeah, we'll look it up, and we'll, we'll, we'll pull up right to your house. Maybe. It'll be a surprise. Right. Or we could just send somebody else. Yeah. Or we just send you an envelope with like our picture in it. Yeah, or maybe like a bag of yellow Legos or something. I don't know. <laughs> something. You'll get something. That's for That's sure. Surprise. It'll be a surprise. Go to fcfnetwork.com. Listen to all the shows on the network. Take the FCF Network Challenge. And with that, this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next time. Love you. It was an inside job, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. On behalf of Couch Pilots, There's no way it wasn't. The entire crew. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.